Sinestra. All right, so I had no chance in hell in that battle against the news, but we do get a glimpse at the mystery of life, and all life that is new, ends with new, begins with new, whatever. So let's get out of here. Um, we're just, uh, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of action in this uh, particular part that I'm going through here. It's just a lot of dialogue, a lot of exposition. And yeah, to teleport around on this place, you gotta go back to the land uh, where the commoners live, the non-magic people. And then you just wander around until you find another warp elevator thingy. Skyway, sorry. Skyway, where I'm from, is something completely different. It's like a glass... For those of you that aren't familiar with uh, the Minneapolis-St. Paul uh, metro area, it's uh, the Skyway is both downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. It's like a second or third floor hallway that joins all the buildings together. It's like a, almost like an, a, a tunnel system up, above ground. Yeah, Rainbow Shell and Sunstone. We're going to be getting those. What? Anyway, um, yeah, no, and the reason uh, those are... The Skyway is prevalent in Minneapolis and St. Paul is because it keeps people from going outside in the winter. Um, and all the buildings, in I, I know for a fact in downtown Minneapolis, they're all heated by uh, steam. There's a giant boiler downtown, and everything is kind of connected through uh, water going through, you know, just hot water going through uh, pipes and steam and stuff like that that keeps the buildings heated and keeps the Skyway heated. So, yeah, I went back when I used to work downtown, um, I used to go for a walk uh, all the way around, uh, like through Target, through, or not Target, uh, the, what's that building, the Campbell Methune building, through, like, all the way over to the Wells Fargo building, to um, what's, I think, now called the, P the Capella Tower, used to be the U.S. Bank building, um, and what's that other, the, the other it's like the IPS building or something like that. The other really tall building, I can't remember. I don't remember the order I'm supposed to get these in either. So I'm going to leave and come back. Wind, water. I think it goes fire. Fire, water, air. Wind, rather. By your forces combined. No, because there's no door over here to open. I'll get it figured out. Let's try it again here. So that is wind. I think that I think we want to start with water because we want to end at the middle because that's where the um, yeah I think we want to start with either water or wind and then end with fire. So let's try this because the door is right there. Oh, there we go. Okay. And this, I think, is just... What? Who's laughing at me? A black rock is inside. Well, that's kind of a common household. Like, I can go in my backyard and find a black rock. But it... Uh, oh, yeah, I should probably use these. Eh, we'll save that for... Anyway, invokes Triple Tech Dark Eternal foreshadowing. We'll see what that is. G we'll see what that's good for. Like, six episodes from now. <laughs> I don't know. And just kind of messing around. Lots of dialogue in this part of the section, but it's got some of the best music in the whole game, if not the best music in the whole game. So, And the colors, like just the atmosphere of this part of the game is really cool. Plus the whole magic motif, the whole sleep motif. Who can't who can't get into that? It's fun. And we got an ocean palace, a mammon machine. We have a blackbird. Pretty cool stuff. Yep, here's where they try and trick you. Janus, eh? I think we've already met him.
Ha ha ha. Real funny. Okay. Strange prophet, eh? It couldn't possibly be the other guy that got sucked into that time warp after the Lavos battle. Why can't I talk to this dude? What the hell? What? That doesn't make any sense. As if... So you're implying the moon has no energy. Aha. Uh -huh. So, good thing we have a time machine, so if that ever comes about again, we can put it back in 65 million BC and then just warp up to 23, you know, as far ahead as we can go. Anyway, that's all you can do here for the most part, I think. Let's co pay the Blackbird a visit and get a music change. What's up, bros? Aha! It's Dalton. Oh, Ulysses is upset. He doesn't like Dalton. What? What situation? What's going on? Oh, that's that. Anyway, just more ominous foreshadowing. Things to come. So we gotta annoyingly take all these pathways, these warp tunnel things, all the way up to the top, to the palace, and you can just walk right in. The center of the old kingdom, which makes this the center of the universe. How convenient. Well, he's not obligated to open up to anybody. If he doesn't want to, that's fine. Aha. Uh -huh. Hint. So if Shala has a pendant that reminds me of ours, it could be similar. Let's uh, get some better dialogue here. <laughs> From, uh, I was thinking about this earlier. Should probably get uh, better dialogue options with using the original crew here. Okay, I think. I'm remembering <laughs> the triumphant fanfare there. I think if you do this a few times, he'll give you something. I think. You need to do it like 10 times or something like that. I, I, I could be completely wrong. Let's just keep, this is the rest of the LP, scratching the news back. See, now I'm going to be afraid. I'm like, oh, I only needed to do it one more time. Doesn't he give you, like, a magic tab or something? Just one more. Okay, I, I wanted to see what he said if you said no. Damn it, he doesn't give you anything. Shit. Oh, well. I thought he did. Aha, uh -huh. so who could that be, I wonder? You can't open these books. There isn't a three, there isn't a Captain Planet puzzle in this one. Yeah, you just kind of go around, piecing together information, talking to people, bullshitting. You find out who Dalton is, you find out who Shala and Janice are, you find out, find out why the queen is who she is and what she's trying to accomplish why this place is what it is, why the Earthbound Ones are called the Earthbound Ones, and it has nothing to do with the game Earthbound. It'd be kind of cool if it did, though. All his prophecies. And yeah, this is a pretty big uh, palace here. There's lots of people to talk to. All three gurus have disappeared. Continues to work. Hey, there's the name of the game. How about that? Oh, I don't think we want to go in there yet. Let's try one more time. Was it? What if I was just one? 
thing away. No, I wasn't. Damn it. Right. Let's talk to these folks. The power of Lavos can make dreams come true. Well, for Lavos, yes, considering his dream is to eat the planet. Uh-oh, I'm stuck in a loop. I can't get out of this. I'm stuck. Aren't they supposed to leave? Aren't you supposed to move? Do I have to go all the way around? Damn it. Don't they disappear? Oh well. Anyway, uh, I guess I could just ramble about music some more. Um, I think this is the bedroom of Shala. On the right over there. Yeah, the same red rock as the Mammon Machine, which means that our pendant, which was mentioned as being similar, is also made from the same red rock. Hey, a music change. Janice, I feel I will become a villain in a James Bond movie someday. But it won't be my real name, it will be a code name. Well, I guess in a way this Janice is kind of a code name. Well, maybe it's Magus' real name, I don't know. Whoops, spoiler alert, sorry about that. Hey, get out of the way. <laughs> Shala appears to be wearing a uh, one of those wearable blankets that they advertise on TV. What are they called, like Snuggies or something? She looks like George Costanza, like when that episode where George was draped in velvet. I'm being cruel. What's this cat's name? A filador? Isn't that Spanish for knife sharpener? Or knifest or something like that? A filador! That's what they do down in Miami. They uh, um, go and... Uh, yeah, let's go to the mammon machine now. They, uh, they actually have people on the streets... I think this is like a big thing in Cuba or something, but they have people on the streets that shout Afilador and they have like a little jingle. It's almost like an ice cream man and they go around sharpening people's knives. No joke. Like machetes and anything from kitchen knives to machetes and stuff like that. I guess that's a thing in South Florida. It's kind of interesting. So everybody's really jazzed about this mammon machine. I don't, I don't see the big deal. It looks kind of ugly. Yeah. And then he disappeared. And I wonder why. And Melchior, we've met that guy. Melchior, whatever his name is. The Earthbound Ones. Alright, can we do anything with this yet? No. I thought Shala was supposed to be in here. I guess we gotta go to the Queen's throne room first. Whatever. Anyway, uh, let's talk to this. Nah, let's just go in. Oh, there she is. Oh, that's this is what you're supposed to do first. You watch and observe, and then go back to the mammoth machine and charge the thing. Like it's a phone or something. Oh, you're still talking to me? God, you say the same damn thing. So, let's try it. Oh, we get the loser game show sound. I'm gonna create a Chrono Trigger ROM hack that all it does, it keeps the game exactly the same, it just inserts that sound into that particular instance. That's it. It'll be called the Price is Right hack. I'm not actually gonna do that. I don't have any fucking time for that bullshit. <laughs> this is a stupid joke. All right, so we've charged our phone, I mean our pendant, so let's go back and try and barge through that door ourselves. Actually, we should probably talk to this. Oh, gee, thanks. I was gonna say, news usually have useful information, but that one does not. Cool. Hey, shouldn't Marley be the one doing that? It's not Chrono's pendant. Cool pixel art. Check out that hair on Dalton. 
Looks like Dave Mustaine. And there's our mysterious prophet up there to the left. By your leave. Dalton's got some great poses. So they get the hell out of there and they send a golem after us. Now, this used to be a huge problem for me. I mean, you technically can beat this enemy, but it's really not worth, especially for the purposes of this LP, it's really not worth the trouble. You might as well just, I mean, I could try some things to see if they work. Uh, just to play around a bit and see how much, how far I really get. Hey, that did decent damage. But this is a fight you're you're supposed to lose. The first time I played through this, I got so pissed off that I could not beat this guy. And I always, <laughs> the first couple times I, I I actually like reset the game and went back to my previous save state, and I could not beat this guy. And it's like, oh, you're not supposed to technically. But we can give it the old college try. I'm not going to waste any tonics or anything or any more MP than I have to. But uh, it's worth it's worth a shot. All right. Luke is dead. Drunk is dead. So this will this next attack I'm sure will take out Marl. Or maybe not. That should only do like 50 damage or so. Yeah. So Yeah, let's just get this over with. I think he's got like something like 6,000 HP, and I'm not even, I'm maybe over a thousand. Alright, that'll do it. See, so even if you beat him, they still come back and say, take them away. It's like, but we just beat a giant monster. Either way, Shala, let us, let's attack aggressively. Aha, see that's Shala's concern. She wants to know what happened to the gurus. So here come our happy-go-lucky bunch and she's like, hey, these people may know a thing or two. And they may, okay. So we gotta go to the mountain of woe. But wait a minute. It's this guy. Ha. Huh. And he agrees to spare them. But why? So she just has to go along with it, I guess. All right, off we go. Back to stupid ass. I think we're, that brings us back to 65 million BC. And she puts on the pink tetrahedron of death, or whatever the name of that is. The pink pyramid of death. And back we go. Yep. Back to stupid ass 65 billion BC. Aha, see now that we have the ability to open up those doors with the pendant, now we can go treasure hunting, so to speak. We can go any place we remember that we've seen this thing. We can go and open it and see what's in it. And hey, why not? That's a good time-killing thing to do, right? Yeah, let's check it out. But we have to do that. We got to go all the way back around to... Uh, uh, good thing we parked our, parked our pterodactyls reasonably close. We got to go back to the other warp point to get back to the end of time. 
I wonder if those birds will, or, uh, yeah, they are birds. If they'll stay there when we come back later, probably not. Oh God, can we get past these assholes? Hey, we can, nice. Sick of these random battles. All right, so let me just go over here and fall. Go ahead, jump, jump. Might as well jump. Can you tell I'm great at this LP thing? I'm just so interesting. Singing Van Halen. All right, I should probably talk to this guy before I leave. <laughs> Psychotic. Good God. Let's restore our shit and let's get out of here. Back to it was the middle one, I believe. This has the most uh, stuff that we can unlock. And if we go all the way back to even like the f the first proto down uh, the f the very first uh, thing we can uh, get some treasures I don't think there's anything else in the factory for us but yeah we gotta backtrack through here which means I gotta race Johnny again which means I I'm definitely gonna lose at least once I am drinking gin tonight and I'm not usually a gin drinker gin is I just don't like the taste of it it's one of those things where but uh, my girlfriend paid like 40 bucks for this bottle, so I might as well try and enjoy it. But uh, don't drink and drive, folks, as usual. Let's see if I can pull this off. I doubt it. Looking real skeptical here. This background is making me dizzy. I totally mistimed that. Oh, shit. See, if you had me play something like Contra 3 or Donkey Kong Country or whatever, I I would be so terrible at it. I just I, RPGs I can do because you're just navigating things and pressing buttons and managing, you know, battles and that sort of stuff. But stuff like this, that background is making me like I have to close my eyes every once in a while. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Anyway, maybe it'll help if I take my mind off what I'm doing and just sit here. Like, if I talk about, um, remember back in the day when stuff like, uh, alternative, alternative music used to mean something? Like, there's a reason the word alternative came up. It was, uh, an alternative to pop music. It had pop sensibilities. Hey, I actually did it. It worked. I'm not a complete failure. But yeah, stuff like, um, a good example would be the Talking Heads back in the late 70s. Like, they had a lot of pop sensibilities, like the song Psycho Killer, like, uh, Pulled Up, and from their first album. Um, but it wasn't quite pop music. It was kind of goofy and weird and, and a little out there, a little too weird for, for mainstream audiences. Um, another good example is R.E.M. R.E.M., uh... Again, this is like r pop music. It's it's verse, chorus, verse, but there's something kind of off about it. There's something creepy and weird and unsettling. Uh, the Cure is a perfect example. Um, that they're probably the best example of al the whole alternative thing because Robert Smith writes all kinds of different kinds of music for everything from like pop songs like Friday Friday I'm in Love, but his they don't look the part for one thing, obviously. And none of these people say anything different, do they? Or they just talk about Death Peak and that sort of thing? I wonder if there's any doors down here. I thought there would be a door in here. And I don't want to waste my time going... Well, let's at least look in here. There might be something down here. But yeah, uh, what was I rambling about? Yeah, the, the Cure. Um... They have all sorts of, uh, um, you know, just listen to the album Pornography. It's one of, like, the darkest, b 
most bleak sounding albums ever. But it still has, you know, songs like A Strange Day and stuff like that has kind of a pop feel to it. You know, it's verse, chorus, verse. It's melodic. It's just very dark. <laughs> so it's an alternative to pop music. It's not pop music, but it's somewhat similar. There we go. There is something down here. Yeah, and you just walk up and open it like you normally would, and you get this annoying text box every single time. And the music changes. And we get four treasures. Hit ring. Oh, and we also get a tab over here. Nice. So let's check out our new stuff. It's like Christmas morning over here. Yeah, we're gonna give her the Lumen robe. I use Marl the most, so. Um. Hit ring. Yeah, let's give that to Crone. He doesn't need a speed belt. He's fast enough as it is. I think he is faster than any other character I have. So let's give her. No, I'm I'm due to get the gold, not the gold earring. What's the the gold something? I guess we can give her. Oh, I forgot. What's the other item that gives you a? Yeah, let's just give that to Luca. Who cares? And then power tab. I don't want Luca to be completely useless. Realistically, though, you really should stick to like your main party and give them all the tabs, basically. Is there anything else new? Not really. Anyway, yeah, alternative music is, uh, it used to mean something. It was, uh, nowadays, you know, there's, uh, like I have Sirius XM, uh, satellite radio, and there's the Alt Nation station, and the stuff they play does not you know, I hate to be a snob. I don't hate to be a snob about it, but I'm going to be a snob about it. It's not alternative. It's just regular old pop music. It's not an alternative to pop music. It's just pop. It's just regular stuff. There's nothing weird. I, ah, damn it. I will say there are some alternative bands out there that um, I think Gorillaz is a great example of something that is kind of weird, kind of unusual, kind of creepy. That's not... Like that's an alternative band right there. Like they they do different things. They're you never know what to, what to expect from them. They kind of remind me a little bit of Talking Heads in that way, and that they're capable of fucking anything. Whether it's hip hop, whether it's like EDM electronic stuff or wh whatever. I'm not gonna go the other way, to, all the way to that dead guy in the fridge. No thanks. I don't think there's anything in there. I thought there was another one. I thought there was one, something up those stairs up there, but I guess not. I guess that's in the other dome. So we're gonna have to go back all the way around. But yeah, alternative used to kind of, you know, there's a reason the term came about. And same thing with industrial. Industrial used to mean. It's weird that industrial kind of how that term came about. So we're supposed to go into the sewer access here to reach. Um, where the next place we need to go to find the so-called wings of time but let's keep exploring for more uh, crests doors and crests uh, not crest toothpaste or yeah the uh, industrial started out as something too going back to like the 70s with you know stuff like really harsh noise stuff like you know seen as anti-music it was seen as a protest whereas alternative was an alternative to pop music industrial was like I hate pop music that's what it was it was it was like it was punk but more see punk still at least had verse chorus verse it was angry it was loud and it was you know it was anti music it was more anti society um, it was more about making a statement, at least in my experience, like Sex Pistols, Dead Kennedy, Dead Kennedys, and Descendants, and The Damned, and all that sort of stuff was all about like making a making a statement and saying something. Uh, it was more lyrical. It was more. Uh, oh shit! Do I have to fight these people? No, I got through. Oh, these this rat's gonna take a tonic, and I'm not gonna give a shit. That rat's gonna take a tonic, and I'm not gonna give a shit. This rat's probably gonna take a tonic, and I don't know. Oh, no, I got. Doing pretty good at avoiding battles, but I could be, could do better. Getting tired of these guys. But no, industrial was more about being anti-music. 
if I remember correctly. It was it was just, and especially in the face of what was popular at the time, like when Throbbing Gristle or Coil or, you know, that, that sort of stuff, where it's just like, it's just noise and craziness and, you know, Cabaret Voltaire is another one. And I'm trying to think, I'm blanking on some of the bands. Um, Einstrasende Neubauten is another one, really creepy band that has some crazy ass music. Um, they're an industrial band that's <laughs> that's uh, kind of anti music too. They're more about uh, hey a wallet, so we can turn experience into um, money. Oh, she, that's an accessory? Damn. Okay, well, that increases her charm spell big time. So that we'll definitely be using. Let's see if there's any in here. I know there's at least one in here. Yeah, we're just going good old-fashioned treasure hunting, seeing if there's anything we can do. Any, any other goodies we can find. No, it doesn't say anything if you say no. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, they got a sampling over here. That's right. Or sapling, rather. That's sampling. A plant? What's that? Let's see if they... Got nothing for you fools. What are you, Mr. T? Anyway, yeah, but then... Here came guys like Trent Reznor, and they just had to take the quote-unquote into a oh, gold stud. That's what it is. Yeah, we definitely want to give that to Marl because it. I think it halves or your magic usage. It's super. It's one of the most useful accessories in the whole game. Oh, by 75%, even better. Yeah, it's it's an awesome accessory. One of, it's the most useful in the game, in my opinion. And you want to give it to your heavy magic user, obviously. But yeah, now we that's like one less person we have to worry about like replenishing with ethers. So really nice to have that. So totally worth coming all the way over here in my opinion. It's the best accessory, so there you go. I, there's at least a couple other spots where you can get gold studs, but um, I can't remember where they are at the, at the top of my head. They're later in the game. This might be the earliest that you can get that. And we gotta plow through these battles again, oh well. But yeah, I, want, I do wonder when people think of the word punk, what comes to mind. If, because it started in the 90s with like Green Day and then eventually like Blink-182 and then like Good Charlotte and shit like that. And it's like, it's not punk. If anything, it's alternative because it's, you know, it's pop music, but a little heavier. Uh, but real punk, I I'm sorry to say, re uh, use terms like real punk, but... It was a, uh, it was a societal thing. It was a useful thing. It was, uh, it wasn't just fucking like, I don't know what even what what Green Day is anymore. Like I I can't believe they're still around. Never liked Green Day. Was never a big fan. I hate, I didn't like the weird. I've talked about this before. In fact, I think I talked about this like in the last episode. But the weird disconnect between their sing-songy melodies and like this ridiculously heavy guitar sound it's like it just sounds wrong to me but whatever all right we at least got a level up going through all this trouble uh how did i bypass this last time oh sweet i was totally thinking i was gonna get sucked into that god damn it So yeah, this is part 10, I think, of the, uh, of the thing, of the LP. People keep asking me, like in comments and on, on Discord and the subreddit or whatever, actually not on Discord, nobody, there's barely anything in the Discord, but, um, they ask me like, well, what are you going to do when you run out of games? <laughs> You're going to run out of Super Nintendo games. And it's like... The next 
natural thing that I quote unquote am supposed to do. Oh, come on. Don't shuffle me to the next freaking battle like that. The next thing, the, the natural cr path I would take is supposed to be LPs, but I don't like doing LPs. They're too time consuming. I run out of shit to talk about. I just don't like doing them. I'm not very good at them, obviously. So that's not really like, I'll probably finish this one eventually. I'll finish the Chrono Trigger one. I might do like one more. We'll see. I don't know, but I'm just, I, I want to keep doing regular reviews because I like being, I'm a, I like writing. That's the thing. I've always been a decent writer. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a technical writer at heart, which means taking a lot of information and summing it up in as few words as possible. And I feel like LPs are the antithesis of that. <laughs> so I would I, I feel much more useful uh, just you know writing something and explaining why I like something, why I don't like something, and hopefully you know making sure that's useful in, in one way or another uh, whether that's uh, you know telling people about a game they've never heard of or like a game that was never released in the United States hey what's going on here Sir Crawley what's that but yeah we gotta go through th this way to uh oh these guys are dangerous they're magic users But they're also not very strong. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't find LPs all that useful, especially since there are about, what, 200, 300 LPs out there of Chrono Trigger already. You can go watch anybody. And it's probably there's probably like six or seven people tr streaming Chrono Trigger on Twitch, like, right now. So it's like, I'm not offering anything useful in that sense. This uh, dungeon down here is a little complicated. It's, it kind of plays some cheap uh, visual tricks on you. There's, there's, and I get, I bet you anything, I'm gonna get like stuck or something. That's another reason I suck at LPs. I don't prepare. What? What's going on? Hmm. Yeah, that's why I put him in the party. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We got this, like, little obstacle course here. And that gin's not bad. It's called Tim's. T-I-M-M-S. I don't think it was $40, though. It might have been, like, 30 something But, yeah, you just kind of... It's tempting to... It may be tempting to kind of rustle with this... Uh, <laughs> cheese and yes that's a fake save st save spot if you even uh, go and activate it and make the sound it'll summon enemies which isn't the worst thing but for the purposes of this video I'd rather avoid that kind of stuff okay moving on Yeah, I would rather not uh, do the, uh, what's the point of this? Okay, here's where it gets uh, a little tricky. You, you can't really see that hallway, but you, know, you open that up, and then I think you go back around. Yeah. I think you have to go back up and around. Are there any other switches here? Isn't there a bridge I can activate or something? I guess I gotta go uh, out and around. I told you I'd get stuck, folks. I'm telling you, I don't prepare. I don't... Uh... <laughs> I've played through this game like a gazillion times. And in New Game Plus, I've seen every ending at least one, at least a few times now. But little details like this, like, I don't care to, you know, I don't remember, I don't retain that much information. Hey, we can get to this uh, chest at least, but it looks like we're stuck again, so I guess we gotta go back down. 
Maybe this will unlock another little dialogue scene with one of those little eyeball monster things. Yeah, those guys are pushovers. Alright, let's see what we got in here. I think it's a new sword. Nope, never mind. Don't we get a new sword down here? Yeah. So... I don't want to leave. Nothing over here, nothing over there. Whatever. Guess we'll just uh, head back down. I'm missing something, and some of you guys, some of you guys are probably screaming at the screen. Sorry. You should do more LPs, Nest Drunk. Well, this is what you fucking get. You get me wandering around lost. <laughs> Ulysses looked at me very. Hey, I can skip that battle. That's cool. Oh, there we go. See, this is how it fucking tricks you. And then you go through the door over there. All right, that makes sense. Well, it doesn't make sense, but that's what you have to do. And here we are. <laughs> Boss. And we are on the other side, and we can get this rage band. <laughs> rage band. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Ah, we won't be using that, though. We got a boss fight. Austin Powers moment. Or actually, Austin Powers ripped this off in that scene. Yeah, I'm sure the writers of Austin Powers were playing Chrono Trigger when they came up with that scene where they can't stop laughing. Okay, so, uh, kind of telling here that this, uh, doesn't even warrant any boss music. We just have regular battle. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Oh, wow, that did a shit ton of damage. But I think, uh,. This is going to do a little more damage. <laughs> Two attacks, and it's over. Come on, does he warrant that dramatic exit? <laughs> 100 experience points. Hey, 500 gold, that's not bad. All right, we got to get her healed. God, I'm not even close to Cure 2 yet. It kind of sucks. At least I got life for Chrono. That's Kind of one of the most useful spells. But hey, what's going on? God damn it. Anyway. What else can I ramble about? Oh, uh... I do play, uh... You know, I don't just... <laughs> I don't just listen to music. I also play music. Uh, I do play guitar. Or at least I, I grew up playing guitar. Well, I grew up playing piano, and then I played, started playing guitar when I was 10 or 11. My mom had a steel string acoustic. Uh, don't remember, I think the brand was called Stella. <laughs> and um, eventually I got uh, my own uh, Squire uh, clone from Epiphone. So I had that for many years. And th There we go, that's the sword. I knew you got a sword down here. Oh, come on! That's right, I got the Aeon Blade from... whatever. Hey, cool. But did that open up another bridge? Like, I don't want to go this way. Oh, here we go. Are we where we need to be? Yes, we are. That's Death Peak over there on the right. We don't want to go over there yet, though. We want to head see what this is. Hey, it's that familiar music. That's kind of cool. It's not a strange creature, it's a new. Huh, what did I shut it off? I 
That's weird. Alright, let's see what's going on. Yeah, my first job, I got a, uh, I saved up to get a Jackson PS4. Because all I cared about when I played guitar as a teenager was speed. It had, like, super low action. It had one of those Floyd Rose bridges. Oh my god, those things are such a pain in the ass to change the strings on. But it was fun to play at the time. 24 frets, rosewood. And I would play silly shit like, you know, Metallica solos. I loved Kirk Hammett. I loved uh, anything Slayer did. I loved their riffs. Soundgarden had some great riffs. Loved learning. Soundgarden had really strange tunings, though. Like, you couldn't just, like, sit down and play a Soundgarden song. You had to sit there and adjust your tuning for, like, ten minutes before doing that. But, uh, no, Soundgarden's got some great stuff to play. Wow, look at this thing. So let me in. Let me have them. I want to use them. So let me have them. Oh, I think this is one of those things where you have to leave. And this dude's like, oh yeah, you're going to want the seats for those. Or for that, I mean. No, not really. Oh, it is Belthazar. Wow, that's crazy. Hey! I don't have any clever names or anything, so let's just go with Epoch. Alright, let's go. <laughs> mumble, mumble! Yeah, no, we don't need any kind of uh, stuff, so we can just go to. 12,000 BC on our own. But the theme of this episode is treasure hunting, so to speak. Wow, look at this. <laughs> yep, at this point, Epoch just kind of drops you off at any given place. So... Now, depending on what, at what, with some of these treasures here that you find, uh, nothing here. You can you can go back to these treasures at certain points of the game, and there'll there'll be something different. I just want to show off that the fact that you can. Uh, no, it still says the same stuff. Some of these ra it's, some of these random houses have just stuff. You just gotta look for it. But, um, like, if you go get these things now, most of them will be, uh, vests. Uh, if you go later, they'll be a little bit more powerful. Here, we got a couple right here. Probably, uh, like, black vest, white vest. Black vest. And then this one's probably a white vest. If you leave these alone, and you get them, like, much later in the game, they will be something more powerful. But... <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's look for some more stuff. But yeah, you can you can just screw around and go to every time period and unlock all those, and you can those black vests, white vests, those are useful items. Like you know, they're they're it's elemental defense, elemental magic, and such. So, but really, what we want to do is go back to twelve thousand BC. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, like I said, the epoch just kind of drops us off. Yeah, there's that. We can't. Uh, we don't get to pick and choose where we end up. We gotta go. We just got, we just end up where we are. And now suddenly, this ladder is long enough to go up mysteriously. And we got these depressing-looking folks. Huh. 
But, on the plus side, this is one of the biggest jumps in uh, equipment and weapons in the whole game, I would say. It's a massive upgrade across the board. So, we want to get basically as much as we can get for everybody. Why not? I mean, let's equip everything and sell everything. Hey, I've got that bolt sword I can sell too. Let's get her a lumen robe. Yeah, and we've got those vests. We can sell those too if you want. Or we can put them to use. We've got the mega blast for her. Uh... Megaton arm. God, he's still got an iron helm. We gotta fix that. That's terrible. Yeah. Alright, let's sell some of this stuff and get some more money back. Yeah, I'm not big on keeping equipment. Oh, I forgot to equip that. Whoops. And I bought one too many. <laughs> Figures. Bolt sword. Let's keep the vest for now. But we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Yeah. We'll keep the lumen robe since that's... Alright, what can we buy? Can we get a frog's thing? Mine as well. Get some flash mail. And we'll get a couple glow helms if we can. <laughs> Back to <laughs> 66 gold. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's not worth it. Really? She can wear a, a rock helm, but not a glow helm? That's some bullshit. But he definitely needs an upgrade. An iron helm? That's, I guess it's only a nine point upgrade, but still. Get the lumen robe on her. And the flash blade on him. <laughs> you could sell the mouse immune if you want. Yeah, now we can... Uh, huh. Might as well do a good old-fashioned power glove. See if there's anything else that will work. Maybe a speed belt. Maybe a power scarf. Does a little bit more. Hmm. We'll stick with this for now. Let's see what else we can sell. Anything else? Yeah, we have uh, flash mail for Chrono. You could spend a shitload of time just fighting monsters and just coming back here, you know, going back in time and... Yeah, you're not gonna get shit for this. I could sell those, but I think I'll hold on to them for now. Just, they might come in handy. Could sell that elixir for a million dollars. Yeah, you can go grind and you can get all your stuff, uh... Bat, uh... You know, go back to 65 billion BC or whatever, or or to wherever you want and grind and get a ton of money, and then or you, equip the wallet and exchange it for. It'll move your ex, your uh, experience for gold. So, and then you can come right back here and get the best possible equipment the game can offer at this point. So, and I have done that before. So, wow, Miss Shala actually comes in. Hangs out with these losers? No, I'm just kidding. Nah. Let's go see what the beast nest is. Oh, it's the inn. Sure, why not? I think we'll end it here. Um, we're close to an hour, so that'll be it for part 10. <sighs> I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Cheers!